Good morning and welcome to worship at Old South Congregational Church, United Church of Christ on this second Sunday of August. Welcome, welcome to those of you who are here in the sanctuary. Welcome to those who are joining us on Zoom and welcome to those who will be uh, watching this worship service on YouTube in the days or weeks to follow. If you are joining us and you're not on the, uh, you're joining us uh, on Zoom or um, on YouTube, if you're not on the church's regular email list, you can find the bulletin for today's service and the announcements page on our website. Just look up in the upper right hand corner. Um, and especially for those who are joining us, not in the sanctuary, today is a communion Sunday since I was away last week, and you'll want to make sure that you have some elements that you can use when we get to that part of the service closer to the end of the service today. But welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Glad that you've taken some time to be in this space, to be with this group as people who are here to worship and to praise, to open up our hearts and our minds to the presence of God, to find strength and blessing, and to know that God cares for each and every one of us and all of us together. So welcome. I'm glad that you're here. We'll begin as we normally do with a prelude, so I'll turn it over to Brad.
Please join me in the cause worship invocation and the Lord's prayer. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Huh? Know that the Lord is God. God made us, and we are God's. Give thanks to God and bless God's name. And God's faithfulness to all generations. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, gather us together in this time of worship that we may be renewed and strengthened as your holy people. Be among us and show us the way of love and hope, joy and blessing, and inspire us to share our experience with others. Hold us close, loving God, that we may trust more fully in you. We continue in prayer with the words Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we'll sing together our first hymn. Our first hymn today is For the Beauty of the Earth. You'll find it in the New Century Hymnal, number 28, or you'll find the words on the announcements page. <laughs> Today's psalm is from Psalm 85, beginning at verse 8. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people. 
to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Thank you. So this August, we are trying uh, something a little bit new and different in order to inspire um, more in-house worship leadership while I'm away. For those of you who attended last Sunday, you got your so first experience uh, of this new format uh, that includes the sharing of a devotional along with a personal reflection during what is normally the, uh, the sermon or message slot during worship. This is usually the part that keeps people from volunteering to lead worship. I don't know why uh, sermon writing is so easy, um, such a simple task, um, but I'll grant you it, it can be a bit daunting. And so I can understand that people are reluctant uh, to lead worship if it means that they need to write a sermon. So in trying to think of something new, um, somehow this um, fabulous idea jumped into my head in terms of sharing a devotional along with a personal reflection in this place, making worship leadership more accessible. So I thought this would be a good thing to try, but I hadn't really thought about the two services that I would be leading uh, during August. Uh, should I share a devotional and a personal reflection or should I be writing a regular sermon uh, since, you know, that's why I, I paid the big bucks. Um, so um, anyway, I'm still deliberating uh, about this issue um, at near the end of the week um, when we landed on Friday and Friday's daily devotional from the United Church of Christ um, was just the sort of thing that not only was a good devotional, but seemed like an excellent thing uh, to share um, with the congregation during worship. And so the issue is solved um, for me. I'm not quite sure what I'll do next week, but for this week, I am sharing um, this Friday's daily devotional from the United Church of Christ. So those of you um, who don't normally read the devotional, um, if those of you do read the devotional, this might sound a little familiar to you. And if you don't, and you wanna see it for yourself, you can see it, you can find it on the United Church of Christ webpage and just look for this past Friday. Um, I think once I share it with you, I think you'll know why. I thought it was just a great little piece to share. Um, it was written by um, a pastor named Kaji uh, Dosa, a pastor in um, New York City, um, and provides a consideration of a word that I suspect many of you have seen, especially those of you who read the Psalms, a word that you've perhaps wondered about. What exactly is this word? And even more so, what does it mean? What's it doing here? It's like that, just there, by itself, kind of after a sentence. What do I do with it? Do I say it? Do I not say it? Here it is, sitting here in the middle of this song, maybe a couple of times. What do I do with this word? Does anyone know the word I'm talking about? This is a word that appears 71 times in the book of Psalms. And then it also appears a few more times in the book of the prophet Habakkuk. Nowhere else. So far, we don't, yes. There you go. Excellent. So, see, so you're right, kind of on top of things. We'll get to it. Don't, don't worry. If you didn't, it, one of the, re, um, we'll get to it. If you didn't quite get uh, what they were saying, just uh, um, I'll share it in just a moment. One of the reasons we don't usually talk about this particular word is because it is so shrouded in mystery. Scholars are genuinely unclear about this word, although there are a few theories out there. The devotional I'm about to share is centered on, centered on the word Salah. I hope you find this as meaningful as I did. I'll read the devotional and then I'll invite a short moment of quiet 
and then a very short closing prayer. So again, this is a devotional um, entitled Salah by Kaji Dosa. Here's the scripture verse, Psalm 46, verse 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Salah. And this is her reflection. My child is at an age where they love to categorize things in order of favorites. What's your favorite color, song, artist, pair of shoes, etc.? they ask. A lot. And I don't think of things this way anymore. So that's a rough, so it's rough on me to answer. But one day they asked a question I was ready to answer. What's your favorite word in the Bible? And this one was easy. It's Salah. Salah is a curious, beautiful word that we find throughout the Psalms. It's somewhat challenging to pinpoint a very clear definition of this word, Salah. But here's where I've landed. Salah is a liturgical instruction. You see, the Psalms were read in community again and again to do what the Lord commanded. Write these instructions on your heart. The Psalms write some instructions on our hearts. They give us a map for where to go. They give us a language for worship that we hear and say on repeat in the sanctuary to take home and remember when we need them. And whenever the Psalm instructed Salah, that meant take a moment, take a moment to give praise to the one who makes all things possible. Take a moment to remember God and to lift your head to the skies. Take a moment because you can't do this on your own, nor do you have to. Take a moment because our God will not leave or forsake you. Salah, your God deserves this time. Salah, you need this time. Salah, God is your refuge and your strength. Salah, God is your help. Salah, let this moment of devotion inspire a moment for and to. Salah, let us take a moment and offer some quiet praise, quiet petition, quiet something where you open yourself to the presence of God in this place, offer thanks, invite help, whatever you need for today. Let us take a moment, Salah. Let us pray. Take your praise break. Give glory to God. Salah throughout the day. And watch your spirit rise. Salah. Amen.
God is our refuge and strength, a very present time help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Salah. We turn to God when we are troubled, and we gain strength from our trust in his love. Because we have a source of strength, we can offer that strength and love to others. We offer our strength through our participation in mission, such as our bread of life dinner. We offer our strength through our gifts to the outreach fund. This month, our gifts are going to the jail, Kennebec County Jail Inmate Fund. Our gifts help supply personal care items, books, magazines, writing materials, anything or items which inmates cannot afford themselves and which the jail cannot supply. So be generous as you share your strength with others in need this week and every week. Thank you, Christine. We take our uh, some time during worship to be mindful of how we give of ourselves, how we acknowledge the gifts and talents and time and treasure that are part of our individual and collective lives. Take a moment to reflect on how we support and encourage this gathering of God's faithful people. Let me take a moment to consider how we financially support this community of faith. And so if you have brought an offering uh, this morning you may come forward in just a moment. There's an offering plate on the front pew on this side and just behind the candles on this side. If you are joining us uh, from, uh, from home, you may send in offerings to the church office or you may use a credit card and all the instructions and the link for that all on our webpage. But let us take a moment to prayerfully consider how we give of ourselves, how we support this community of faith.
Be seated. It is now time to gather around the communion table. Uh, just a couple of uh, reminders um, for you and for me um, about uh, sort of how we generally um, practice this uh, service. Those of you who are at home, um, if you haven't already done so, make sure you have some items that you can use as elements during the service. For those of you in the sanctuary, um, we will, um, uh, Cynthia and I, I think, uh, will be bringing the elements around the sanctuary when we get to that part of the service. Um, we will um, bring the bread first and then the juice while um, bread, uh, plays. We will not have a break in between, and you may take the elements of communion as they are passed to you as we go around um, the sanctuary. Um, if you have a question, um, you may just sort of flag one of us as we're going around the sanctuary. But let me invite you to the table with these words. Beloved in Christ, the gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus Christ was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene. On that same day, sat at the table with two disciples. It was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Men and women, youth and children come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and gather about Christ's table. This table is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. Let us now sing together our communion hymn. Here, O oh my Lord, I see you face to face from the New Century Hymnal, number 336, verses one and five. The words are also on the announcements page. may be seated. On the night on which Jesus was betrayed, he sat at supper with his disciples. While they were eating, he took a piece of bread, said a blessing, broke it, and gave it to them with the words, this is my body broken for you. Do this to remember me. Later, he took a cup of wine saying, this cup is God's new covenant. Drink from it, all of you, to remember me. Following Jesus' example and command, we take this bread and this cup. The ordinary things of the world which Christ will make new and special. And as he said a prayer before sharing, let us do so as well. If you are joining us remotely, I would encourage you to Hold on to your uh, communion elements or put your hands near them since part of this will be the consecration of these elements. Let us pray. Gratitude, praise, hearts lifted high, voices full and joyful. 
These you deserve, O God, for when we were nothing, you made us something. When we had no name and no faith and no future, you called us your children. When we lost our way or turned away, you did not abandon us. When we came back to you, our arms opened wide in welcome. And look, you prepare a table for us, offering not just bread, not just the fruit of the vine, but your very self, so that we may be filled, forgiven, healed, blessed, and made new again. You are worth all our pain and all our praise. Holy God, as we come to share the richness of your table, we cannot forget the rawness of the earth. We cannot take bread and forget those who are hungry. We cannot take the cup and forget those who are thirsty. We cannot hear your words of peace and forget the world at war. We cannot celebrate the feast of your family and forget our divisions. We are one in spirit, but not in fact. Merciful Christ, present with us now for all that we have done and all that you have promised, what have we to offer? Our hands are empty. Our hearts are sometimes full of wrong things. Yet you welcome us here in all of our truly humanness. So as we do in this place, what you did in an upstairs room, send down your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. These elements in this room, as well as those elements in the hands of those who join us remotely, that they may become for us, all of us, your body, healing, forgiving, and making us whole, and that we may become for you, your body, loving and caring in the world until your kingdom comes. Amen. With his friends, surrounded by his disciples, Jesus took bread, gave thanks for it, and broke it and said, this is my body, it is broken for you. And later he took the cup and said, this is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take this, all of you, to remember me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are ready.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Holy and merciful God, you have put your life into our hands. Now we put our lives into yours. Take us, renew and remake us. What we have been is past, but what we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us on, take us with you. Because you made the world, O oh God, and intended it to be a good place and called its people your children, because when things seemed at their worst, you came in Christ to bring out the best in us. So gracious God, we say, goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, truth is stronger than lies. Because confusion can reign inside us we cut despite our faith, because anger, tension, bitterness, and envy distort our vision, because our minds sometimes worry small things out of all proportion, because we do not always get it right, we want to believe that goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, truth is stronger than lies, because you promise to hear us and are able to change us and are willing to make our hearts your home, we ask you to confront, control, forgive, and encourage us as you know best. Then let us cherish in our hearts that which we strong, we endeavor to proclaim, that goodness is stronger than evil, that love is stronger than hate, that light is stronger than darkness, that truth is stronger than lies. Gracious and holy God, loving Savior, hear our prayer and change our lives until we illustrate the grace that you, O oh God, have given, that you, who makes all things new, will make us new as well. Amen. And now we'll sing together our final hymn, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. You'll find it in the Pilgrim Hymnal, number 101, and the words are also on the announcements page. words of blessing as we come to the end of our worship this day. Take these words of blessing with you and remember 
to take moments throughout your week to offer a word of praise and thanksgiving. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.